just a little disclaimer. Um, right after the service, please don't take offense or think uh, that, uh, take it personally, but right after the service, literally as soon as I say amen, I'm going to grab my backpack and I'm going to leave because I have to catch a flight. So it's not because I don't want to be here with you or I don't want to talk to you, but I'm going to be getting on out of here. So uh, if we wrap things up and we're a couple of minutes early, that might be okay uh, this morning. But pray for me as I fly out. Pray for safety, obviously. Um, but I'm going out for our uh, board meetings for our fellowship, the Association of Churches that we're with, Fellowship of Evangelical Churches, and we meet quarterly um, to discuss the things that are going on in the association and decisions that need to be made. And we've shared with you before a little bit in past months, for those of you that have been here, that we're in a bit of a transition time with the way funding works and the way some of the things are happening and communication and all that kind of stuff. So I appreciate your prayers for us tomorrow as we talk about some of that. It Some of it directly impacts us and the way that we do things here. So I'd appreciate your prayers for that as well. Um, well, a couple of weeks ago, I don't know how many of you noticed this or not, but a couple of weeks ago, the Association of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences had their annual award show. Does anybody know what we usually call that? The Oscars. I don't know if you, if you guys are movie buffs or if you care about that sort of thing, uh, but they had their annual award show, and, and if you've ever watched that before, you know that for like two hours before the show actually starts, they roll out the red carpet I hope it's a lot tighter and flatter than this one because everybody here this morning is afraid I'm going to trip on this. My wife says I shuffle and I scuff my feet while I'm up here. So if I do a flat layout here, somebody just prop me back up. Uh, but they have a red carpet and all the celebrities walk the red carpet and, and the ladies have you know fancy thousands and thousands of dollar dresses on and the guys have tuxedos of different kinds and, and everybody interviews them, oh who made your dress, who did this and your hair and your makeup and the jewelry and all of that and all the preparation, they talk about all the preparations that have been made sometimes for weeks before they walk that red carpet. And i got to let you in on a little bit of a secret because you think, wow, to get all that together and to make all that happen, th there's a little secret that you need to know. Those celebrities that you see walking those red carpets, they have what we call personal assistants. They have people that they hire to do all this stuff for them. They run their errands and they manage their schedules and sometimes they take care of their kids and run them to their basketball and soccer practices. Wouldn't that be nice sometime to have that? Uh, we would all, I mean, who here wouldn't love to have a personal assistant to do all the stuff? Oh, really? Only that many? Well, you're all very self-sufficient then. Kudos. Uh, how about, how many of you would like to have a housekeeper? Take care of all your cleaning. Yeah, okay, that resonates a little bit more. Uh, how about a personal chef to make your meals? Yeah, that's what I'd like in my house. Not that my wife can't cook. She is awesome. No, 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 no. No, no, listen. Don't you do that now. I get myself in enough trouble. I want a personal chef, not because she can't cook, but because she doesn't like to cook. That's a favor to her, not a favor to me. I mean, we all could just use a little help sometimes, right? Be nice to have somebody that we could we could call on to do that. And when we think about that in our lives, and we we kind of relate that to our spiritual lives, uh, I think sometimes we kind of get a bit of the wrong impression. This morning we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. We've been working our way through some of these basic truths of what it means to be a Christ follower, and actually. I meant to get these out earlier, and I forgot, but uh, I have some copies of this, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put half of them over here and half of them over here, and if you guys just want to take a copy and, and work your way back on through, just pass them all the way back as we're talking here, um, you can see that. But we've worked our way through these truths, and I, I think part of the problem is when we talk about the Holy Spirit, and some of you may be here this morning and say, Holy Spirit, I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Well, we're going to help you with that this morning. But for those of you that do, sometimes we have a tendency to look at the Holy Spirit and we think of Him as our assistant. 
The Holy Spirit is the one who, who the Bible says lives inside us and he, and he helps us with things that we're lacking. If, if we're lacking strength or we're lacking wisdom or we need some comfort, the Holy Spirit is the one who, who adds that or who, who gives us that. But I want you to understand this morning that the Holy Spirit is so much more than that. He's so much more than our assistant. I want you to look as you get those and you, you uh, have these sheets to look at. Just stick that in your Bible or in your pocket or something. If you're uh, coming to church regularly over the next few weeks, then you can uh, just kind of follow along with what, we've, what we're doing. And I put some of the verses on that we've been talking about so that you can look at it a little bit more later as those make their way back through there. But we've talked about the fact that the Bible is the source of my understanding of God. A lot of us have our own idea of who we think God is. But if we're going to be a Christ follower, we need to go to the Bible. That needs to be our source. We can't make this stuff up. We can't just do what we think is right. We need to look at the Bible to understand who God is. It's the standard for living my life. And when we read the Bible, we find out that God alone is holy and righteous, that He wants a relationship with me. In the last couple of weeks, Pastor Tim has been talking to us. He's talked about the fact that Jesus, who is God the Son, became the perfect man. And then last time we talked about the fact that Jesus Christ is the only way that we can be saved. Now we're going to add one to that this morning. Uh, And it's this, that the Holy Spirit, or God the Holy Spirit, walks with me through life. The Holy Spirit is not my assistant. The Holy Spirit is not my servant to do my bidding. The Holy Spirit is not a warm, fuzzy feeling when I'm lonely. The Holy Spirit is God. And as God, He walks with me through life. Now, this is not just my opinion. Building on what we've been talking about the last few weeks, it is not up to me to determine who the Holy Spirit is. It's not up to me to stand here and tell you, this is what you need to believe about who the Holy Spirit is. We need to go to the source. The Bible is the source of my understanding of God. And so that's where we're going to look this morning and take a few minutes to talk about what the Bible says about the Holy Spirit. So we're going to look at John chapter 16. So if you have your Bible, or John chapter 14 rather, if you have your Bible, turn with me to John chapter 14. And I'm going to read a couple of verses for you. They're going to tell us a lot about the Holy Spirit. John chapter 14, verse 16. We're jumping into a conversation that Jesus is having with his disciples. And he says this, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. Now Jesus is preparing here for his death. The disciples really don't get all of it. They don't understand everything that's happening at this point. But Jesus, of course, knows what's going to happen. And he knows that soon he's going to go to the cross and he's going to die. And he doesn't want the disciples to be alone. That's what they're worried about. Well, if you leave, what are we going to do? He says, I want you to understand, guys, that if I leave or when I leave... I am going to give you, he says in this verse, another advocate. I'm going to leave someone with you who is going to help you and guide you and teach you just like I've been doing. The word advocate there means helper or encourager. It means counselor. The Holy Spirit's task, we read in this verse, is to lead us into all truth. It is very important for us, especially those of us that are here this morning that are Christ followers who are, have a desire to do what is right and to do what God is asking us to do, it's very important that we understand the truth. 
How many people think it would be a good idea to Google what is truth and try to live by that? There are billions, literally, of ideas and theories on truth floating around in this world. We need a standard. We need, we need something that we can count on. I need to know what I should be doing and how I should be responding. In this world, as a man, as a husband, as a father, as an employee, as a friend, as a neighbor, I need to know the difference between right and wrong. There has to be a standard. And the Holy Spirit helps me with that and helps us with that. Christ was doing that with the disciples. And he says, I am going to give you another advocate, another person. Now, there's a couple of key things that we need to grab onto a couple of key pieces of information that Jesus gives us in these two verses. And we must get this. If this is all you remember from today, you need to remember these things about what Jesus teaches us of the Holy Spirit. First of all, I would draw your attention to two phrases. The first one, the Holy Spirit is another advocate. Now, I told you what the word advocate means. It means counselor, it means helper, it means encourager. That's what Jesus was doing with the disciples, and that's what the Holy Spirit was going to do according to what he was telling them. What I want you to notice is the word another. That's the important word in this passage, another advocate. Now, we speak in this country, well, (laughs) not everybody, but a lot of us in this country speak English. English is not a very specific language. And in our English language, we have one word for another. Right? Anybody know what it is? Yeah, very good, Sue. I'm glad somebody's listening. <laughs> it's another. We use that same word whether we're talking about something very different or something similar. Let me give you an example. Um, once in a while, once in a very great while, I use one of these. It's a golf ball. I go up on Paris Hill there to the, to the golf course, and, and I play golf. I really enjoy it very much. The only problem is I'm not a very good golfer. I don't know if you've ever been up to the golf course up there on Paris Hill. Charlie's been up there a few hundred times, and he's been there with me a few times too, so he can validate everything that I'm about to say. Here's what I do. I get up to the first tee. And I I put the tee in the ground, and I put the ball on it, and I get my driver out. And Paris Hill is a beautiful little golf course. And on the first hole, down the right-hand side, there is a rock wall. And then there's a line of trees. And then there's a whole bunch of really nice houses just on the other side of the trees. And generally, my practice is to put that ball on that tee, to line up with my driver, and to come back and to fall, I mean, my, I have a beautiful swing. I really do. The problem is what happens after the swing. Generally, my ball will leave that tee and go straight for about 60 yards. And then all of a sudden, the forces of physics and nature come into play. And my ball just takes a huge right-hand turn. And usually goes over those trees onto the lawns of those good people who live by the Parasil Country Club. And then what I have to do is I have to reach into my bag and I have to get another golf ball. See these two golf balls? They're exactly the same. I have to get another one, another one of the same kind and the same quality. Now, I'll make a really long story and a really long round of golf a lot shorter to say this usually repeats itself several times over the course of nine holes. And every time I have to reach in and get another golf ball, another one of the same kind. And then usually what happens, I get really frustrated and I say, why am I playing golf? I'm not very good at this. And so I reach in and I get another ball. This ball, I know what to do with this one. I'm good with this one. I can throw, I can catch, I can pitch, I can hit. Now, do you see the difference here? In English, we use the same word. 
I reached into my golf bag, got another golf ball, or I reached in and I got another, a very different kind of ball for a completely different purpose. Now in Greek, there are two words, alos and heteros. Alos means another of the same kind and the same quality. Heteros means a different kind. And when Jesus is talking to the disciples and says, I will send you another advocate, guess which word he uses? Alas. Another of the same kind and the same quality. What is Jesus saying to the disciples? And what is Jesus saying to us? He is saying that when he died and rose again and ascended into heaven, and God the Father sent another advocate, another comforter, another counselor, another helper, he sent us another of the same kind and the same quality. In other words, the Holy Spirit himself is God. It's not like Jesus left, the Holy Spirit came, and now we're not as well off as we were before, because Jesus is gone. The point is this, as Christ followers, we have the Holy Spirit who is the same, he is of the same kind, if you will, of the same quality, if I might say that, even though it's weird to say that of God, as Jesus Christ, he is God. Well, why in the world does that matter, that the Holy Spirit is God? Well, it matters because of this, we have God Himself, God the Holy Spirit, who is our counselor, who is our helper, who is our encourager, that lives in our hearts. Because He is God, then we have access to everything that God is. And all of the power that God has. It's not like we have the Holy Spirit and, and He sort of knows what's going on, but what He really needs to do is talk to God and figure out what needs to be done or ask God to do it. He is God. He is Alos. He is another of the same kind. And the same quality. I want you to notice this other phrase. Not only... That one, the Holy Spirit is another advocate. I want you to notice this phrase too. The Holy Spirit will never leave you. You see that in verse 16? I will give you, He will give you another advocate who will never leave you. If we were to look at those words very closely, we would find out that they literally mean to remain for an unbroken amount of time. To remain for an unbroken amount of time. It never ends. The verb tense here means continuous action. It means that the Holy Spirit is always going to be continuing to be remaining with you. That's not how we would say it in English. It's not very good grammar. But that's what it means. He's always continuously going to be remaining with you for an unbroken amount of time. Never going to end. Everyone here has had relationships of different shapes and kinds and durations. And we have a lot of relationships with people where we say, you know, I'm always going to be there. But even the closest of relationships, we know that ultimately, perfectly, that's not true, is it? No one is ever there all the time. Even, uh, even as uh, married couples in committed relationships, we're not always there all the time. It's not physically possible. But when Jesus describes the ministry of the Holy Spirit, He says He will always be continuously with you all of the time. When you trust Jesus Christ as your Savior, the Holy Spirit comes into your heart and He never leaves. 
ever. Unfortunately, sometimes our misunderstanding of the Holy Spirit parallels our misunderstanding of God in general. He's not just there simply to do our bidding. He is God to be obeyed. He's not an add-on to help us do things for God. When we talk about the Holy Spirit, we need to understand that He's not a ghost. He's not an influence. He's not a feeling. He's not a wind. He's not an impression that comes and goes. Rather, He is God, the Holy Spirit, who walks with you through life. So why does this matter? It matters because this holy, eternal, just, all-powerful, all-knowing God lives in every one of us that has trusted Christ as our Savior. All of these things that we've talked about in terms of God, that He alone is holy and righteous, that He wants a relationship with us, That He is the only way that we can be saved. He provides the standard through the Bible for living my life. He's with us. And He never leaves. I want you to understand that God is not just a random idea that floats around out in the galaxy. He's a personal God who loves you. When you've had the worst week of your life, He's there. And when you come up against a situation that you've never seen before, and you never expected that you'd ever be in, and you have no idea what to do, He's there. And this is a promise to every one of us who's a believer in Christ. Now, you could sit here this morning, and I I fully understand and accept the fact that there could be a wide range of responses to this. You may be sitting there saying, that's the strangest thing I've ever heard. Never heard anything like that. I don't think that's true. Well, my task is to share with you what the Bible says. Your task is to decide whether or not to accept it. You see, if we are going to be Christ followers, we have to believe with all of our hearts that the Bible is the source of our understanding of God. And we have to take it at its word. We can't allow our personal thoughts or feelings or those of anyone else to impact what we believe about God. We have to go by what the Bible says. We have to decide whether or not we're going to accept it. We have a... uh, book that we do sometimes with people who are seeking and and want to know more about God. And one of the things the guy talks about in the very first chapter, and I like it so much, is, look, you owe it to yourself to think about what the Bible says about these topics, about life, about death, about eternity, and then you make up your mind. You choose whether or not you accept it. That's your right The Bible clearly tells us that God the Holy Spirit walks with us through life. God loves you. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died for you. And God the Holy Spirit wants to live in you and walk with you through your life so that you don't have to do it alone. That's His desire. And more than that, that's His promise to all those who trust Him. I'm going to ask the band to come if they would. We're going to sing a song here as we close, and I would simply urge you to think about that, to ask yourself, what do I believe about God? What do I believe the Bible says about salvation, about life, about death, about eternity? That's why we're doing this. That's why we're taking this time over the next few weeks to talk about those things, to share with you what the Scripture says about God and those topics. Take this sheet, take it home, look up some of those verses for yourself, read them, ask some questions. You owe it to yourself to think about what Scripture has to say about these things.